So we build cars here all the time in the VATV shop, which means we've got some professional level tools that are, uh, you know, basically industrial tools to get the job done. But we get a lot of letters from people saying, hey, you know, what can I use in my home garage, on my home 110 volt power, uh, because I might not have my own, you know, full service hot rod shop in my backyard. So uh, Nick here in the shop recently had an experience with Eastwood's new VersaCut plasma cutter, right? Yep. All right, uh, tell me, uh, I think they're marketing this towards the guy in his home garage. Yeah, um, that's kind of the way they're headed with it. We plugged it into our 110 outlet and we cut apart a frame just to see how well it would do. That's about the thickest metal on the car and we figured if it could cut through that, it would do anything you would want to do at home and make pretty clean cuts. Okay, so basically we're talking about a machine that runs on 110 power, and there was a, like a, some kind of a pigtail attachment for 220, is that right? Yeah, it's got a pigtail attachment so that you can uh, plug it into a 110 or to a 220 outlet, and it's got a internal sensor that senses what's coming in so it can adjust its settings so it doesn't overload the circuit breaker. Okay, so that you don't even have to switch anything, it's whatever you plug in, yeah, it's gonna it, work Yeah, out. it'll sense whatever you plug in. Okay, cool, and then, uh, so what else do you need? You need an air compressor. Yeah, you need an air compressor because the plasma cutter runs off compressed air and the electricity to uh, form the cutting device. Other than that, you just need some basic safety equipment. Okay, so the project was we had um, a car frame that we weren't gonna be using anymore, and that stuff is what? maybe up to an eighth, eighth inch thick in some places where it's double layered? Yeah, something around there. Okay, so this is a dual voltage machine. Um, is there any adjustment for the amperage level? Yes, there is. On the amperage on a 110 outlet, you need to set it to a lower amperage, but when you plug it into a 220, you can use a higher amperage setting to cut thicker steel, but on 110, it's high enough that you can cut apart the frame. Okay, so I'm gonna guess the proper procedure is you look at your circuit breaker panel and uh, see what your circuit breaker rating is for your 110 outlet. Plug it in and set the dial to match kind of thing? Yeah, that's what they recommend you do. Okay, now around here, I know we always just turn everything up to 11, so did you, uh, did you try overdriving this thing? Yeah, we just, we tried to see what it would take, so we cranked it all the way up on the 110 outlet, and we were cutting, and circuit breakers are designed to go about three minutes. So every three minutes, with just that little bit of overcurrent drawing, it blew about every two and a half to three minutes. And you, uh, you were able to fix that by dialing the amperage? So yes, that. once it was dialed down to the correct amperage, the bra uh, circuit breaking blowing was uh, pretty much eliminated. Okay, but no fires or explosions? No, there was nothing like that. It just tripped the breaker. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. All right, so how did this thing perform? The plasma cutter actually did really well. It left a really nice clean cut and there wasn't much slag on the inside to clean up. It actually leaves a nice uh, cut like you did it with like a bandsaw or something. Cool. And plasma cutting is cool because you don't need to spend a bunch of money on blades and stuff. Yeah, the only thing that you use is a little bit of air and then some electricity. All right, so it sounds like Eastwood's making it uh, one step closer to being able to run a little hot rod shop out of the garage, huh? They cut the frame really well. Cool, all right. I guess you can learn more about it on their website at eastwood.com.